Good morning, this is Gina at Art of Skin Care. Welcome to my show today. We are going to be talking, having a live discussion about Adipo and some other products that actually stimulate a healthier fat pad. We are seeing a lot of concern around loss of fat pad. You can lose fat pad as you age and there's also certain activities that you can do that increase the loss of that fat pad sun <laughs> we're always speaking about that right sun damage that affects fat pad as well but for now what we're going to talk about today is in particular adipo how to support your adipo use with your other skincare products so that you get the very best results from your adipo so let's get started today. So when we're looking at the skin, when we're looking and thinking about adipo, adipo is seeping down through the hair follicle to the base of that hair follicle where it is actually stimulating and interacting with your adipocytes. That's your fat sites, your fat cell sites. So we want the adipo to be able to get down there and do its good work. That's why when we apply adipo, it's very important to use a painting technique. A painting technique is where you rub it just gently down in one direction. You don't want to rub it like this. <laughs> you want to put it in a downward direction and you want to leave a thick layer on there so that it can seep down into your skin and you're going to leave it on your skin for 10 minutes and then you can either rub it in if you want to or you can use a damp cloth or dry cloth and wipe off that excess that's left over on the surface during the day in particular i'm one of those people that's going to take a damp cloth and wipe it off because i don't like that finish uh, that heavier oil all day long on my skin i just don't like the feel of it so once you've left it on for 10 minutes you can go ahead and remove it or rub it into the skin and continue with your routine but the important thing here is that we are applying it in such a way that it can seep down into that hair follicle so what happens if our skin is not properly cleansed or we have a buildup in those pores and those hair follicles we're getting some blackheads maybe or just a buildup of oil um, then the adipo cannot get down there and do its good work so today we're going to be talking about how to assess your skin and how to choose the right products to support that adipo absorption into the skin so let's start right off the bat by just talking about your pores and looking at your skin in the mirror um, there's there's kind of a condition with the pores that I tend to call sagging pores and I know when you guys hear me say saggy pores you're like what does that mean so when I look at my pores in particular when I look around this area of my face um, between my eyebrows if my pores are looking I call it saggy but what that means is that they're just looking droopy they're looking a little bit enlarged um, the whole texture of the skin is just maybe a little bit droopy and tired looking that is a buildup of sebum in my pores and when my skin is doing that the adipo cannot be as effective so when you're looking at your skin it's going your skin's going to be different than my skin some skin is oilier and some skin is drier some people with very dry skin don't even see pores on their skin it's just like barbie skin there's a few of you out there i know the rest of us have a little bigger pores and some even larger pores and so that's what we need to use when we're thinking about what cleansers toners exfoliants to use we need to be aware of our pore size and then just noticing how long it takes or when those pores start to look a little enlarged or like i like to say saggy pores so a couple things um, let's start right off the bat with cleansers super important with your adipo routine to do proper cleansing so that means washing your face twice a day with a nice gentle gel cleanser my favorite i've got up here is the moisturizing cleansing gel if you have and this is fine for normal skin most all skin types even an oilier skin type can use this it's great for removing makeup it's not dehydrating at all it really puts moisture into the skin and the way that you want to use this is to put it on dry hands rub your hands together make a little bit of a foam massage it onto dry skin 
then get your hands wet and massage for a full minute. So I'm doing a minute or so of massage with it just on dry skin, then I get my hands wet and I massage for another minute. And what we're doing there is we're breaking up the surface tension of the skin so that water can be absorbed into the skin. This is the most important step in your skincare routine um, for getting hydration, getting water back into the skin. Many people don't like to use a cleanser because they feel like it's too drying, but what you're missing out on is that a, the proper kind of a gel cleanser is actually going to help the skin to reabsorb water and rehydrate, super important. Um, the other cleanser that I pulled to show you guys from Dr. S, they also is the AC Control Mousse. AC Control Mousse, they put on here that it's for blemish prone skin. I don't have blemish prone skin, but I like to use it now and then. And the reason why is that this is a really gentle cleanser. It's in a foam. And the nice thing about this is it has a little bit of acids in it. And so it very gently goes in. It has a lot of anti-inflammatory ingredients in it, but it very gently gets in and breaks up that oil on the skin, oil in the pores, and it helps you to shed that um, top layer of dead dry skin cells that can build up on the skin. When you have that buildup of dry skin or, you know, in every pore there's a bit of sebum and dead skin cells that mix together. So using a little bit of acid in there is going to help break up that, dissolve that glue between those dead cells so that they can be exfoliated and come off the skin. So I like to use a little stronger cleanser like this once or twice a week. Um, it's, I call it my deep clean. It smells so good too. It's just really fresh, light, um, not strong smelling at all. Now, so cleansing the skin, that's your number one important thing to do. The next step is to, depending on your pore size, choose a toner for yourselves. If you have a little oilier skin, you're gonna to wanna to use a little stronger toner. If you're blemish prone, you're gonna to wanna to use a little stronger toner, unless you're using a corrective acid, and then that case you might use. There's so many variables in here. It's so great, you guys, that you can reach out to us at Art of Skin Care, and you can have a free skincare checkup, and we can make sure that you've got these things right. But the main thing I wanna say here is that you've gotta choose a toner that's right for your skin, if you have a little oilier skin, you might choose a toner that has a little more acid in it to help correct and clean those pores. If you have a little drier skin, you're gonna use a more nourishing toner on the skin to really prepare it to receive that adipo. I grabbed a couple toners that I wanted to show you guys that I like to use. Um, most days I like to use the Paleo Skin Prep. Um, this has that PLA, PLLA in it, which is a lactic acid, lactic acid, um, is a very nice um, exfoliating acid, but it's also hydrating to the skin. So this is good for those little drier skin types. Another thing that I like are the Hevatox pads, because the Hevatox pads have some acids in there. It's nice in a little pad form. You use the rough side over the skin first, then you flip it over and use the softer side of the skin. The Hevatox pads are all about helping to keep those pores cleared and also refine the texture of the skin and also lift hyperpigmentation so that your other products can really penetrate and get into the skin. Another thing that I like to do to keep my skin in that great shape to receive the adipo is doing a weekly enzyme. For me and my skin type, I can do an enzyme once or twice a week. Some people find that they actually use an enzyme daily. A daily, a good example of a daily enzyme is the deep, deep clear powder wash from Dr. Este. This is a powder you pour it in your hands and then make a nice little foam and massage it in all over. You can leave it on for five minutes and those enzymes go in and actually digest away those dull, dry, dead skin cells. So this can help lift um, blackheads, stuff stuck in the pores, um, dead skin cells in the pores mixed with the sebum. This is gonna get in there and help clean that out. It's gonna help with hyperpigmentation and lifting that. If you have a drier skin type, the one that I like to use is from Botnia, and this is their essential enzymes. This is a creamier enzyme and it works better for those people with the smaller pore size. Now, one thing that I do with my enzymes every week is I put them on and then I grab my Dermadisc. 
I love this thing. Those of you guys who have purchased this and written back to me on how this is lifted off that really stubborn hyperpigmentation that you could not get rid of, it's amazing. So we have a diamond disc on top. There's no suction, so it's not going to break the capillaries of the skin. You turn the bottom and it vibrates. I like to put on my enzymes. Either one of these enzymes works great. And then I put the fine tip on. This comes in a fine, a medium, and a coarse tip. The coarse tip is for your body. The medium can be used when you're not combining it with the enzyme. Um, if you just want to do it on dry skin. And then the fine tip is for when you're combining it with your enzymes. And so that gives you a really wonderful exfoliation. It's going to remove that top layer of dull dry skin cells so that your other serums and your adipo can penetrate and seep down into those pores. Now, many times people who have very flaky and dry skin, they are afraid to cleanse, they're afraid to exfoliate, but what you find is that when you have dry skin, you actually need to exfoliate a little more, but you want to avoid acids. So that's when you want to grab the Botnia Essential Enzymes because the enzymes are just gonna digest away that rough skin on the surface so that your moisturizers can lay in and really be absorbed into the skin. And many times for people with really dry skin, they put moisturizer on and then halfway through the day, their skin is just dry and flaky again. So we've gotta get rid of that dry flaky skin on the surface and then get a really good moisturizer on there to prevent transepidermal water loss and keep that skin nice and moist. So that's kind of the, the three steps that really help your adipo to do its work. So there's the cleanser, choosing a toner, and then choosing an enzyme to use with those. Now, I get a lot of questions from you guys, so I wanna really share with you a morning routine and an evening routine. Many of you guys have reached out to me and asked, how do I use my retinol with Adipo? So my nighttime routine is when I use my retinol, I'm going to cleanse my skin and oftentimes um, I don't even use my toner or anything else. I'm just doing a really great cleanse at night and then I'm gonna do alternating nights. So it's kind of a skin cycling. We're gonna be skin cycling with our Adipo and so one night I will use my Adipo and then the next night I'm going to use my retinol and I use the is clinical retinol emulsion 0.3 and so this is to be used two to three times a week every other night so I'm just going to do an alternating thing now if I were using the one percent which is stronger um, of this it has slightly different instructions so with that one I would use the retinol one percent three nights in a row and then I would pick up my adipo and I'd use it the rest of the week and the next week and then I use that 1% retinol three nights in a row again. So there's just a little variation on how you will cycle through depending on which retinol that you're using. Um, once I've done that on my other, every other night thing and I've got adipo on my face for that second night, after 10 minutes, I do massage that into the skin and I rub the excess onto my hands and other areas where I need some extra moisture. Um, but I don't like to go to bed with it just still in that really shiny state on my face. It doesn't feel good on my pillow and everything. So at that point is when I massage it in really well and then go to sleep. So now let's talk about your morning routine. So my morning routine is when I'm going to use my cleanser, I'm going to use my toner or toner pads, and then I'm going to apply any other serums that I like to apply. For me, I'm putting on Neogenesis Recovery Serum, and then I'm putting on my Cavapla. Now I want to talk just a little bit about Cavapla because this can be a very synergistic and excellent product to combine with Adipo. So Cavapla and the Cavapla products, they have an eye cream and they also have this moisturizer. All three of these contain an ingredient called volufilene. Volufilene also penetrates through the pore and stimulates adipos adipocytes. It also reduces inflammation and it also protects the skin from UVB damage. 
So these are excellent to use during the daytime. And then I often, I think of my Adipo for nighttime. But when you're first getting started on your Adipo, you're wanting to get some extra kind of a build up to a benchmark with your skin and really see some quick results. So what I do is I put on my Cavapla, massage it in really well. During the day, I'm grabbing my Adipo and I'm putting it in key areas. I'm gonna put it across my lips. And if you've got sunken eyes, you might use it across your eyes here. If you've got a lot of flattening of your cheeks, and you're, you know, you're losing this fat pad through here, then you might even apply it to your cheeks. I leave it on for 10 minutes, so I'm putting that on in the morning. I'm all shiny, and then I go and I start getting dressed, I start working on my hair, and after 10 minutes I come back and I use a damp cloth, I use one of the Clean Skin Club wipes, damp, and I remove that excess adipo from the surface of the skin, and then I'm grabbing my Promoter Repair Moisturizer. This also has the Volufilene in it. So I'm putting on my moisturizer, my sunscreen, and then my makeup. So that might be more than what some of you guys want to do, and that's okay. You don't have to do the complicated method if you don't want to. This is what I do. If you just want to be using your Adipo, but say in the morning you want to be using a vitamin C serum, you would put on any serums, no oils though. It has to be a water-based product. You're gonna put on your vitamin C serum or maybe your recovery serum, your stem cell serum, let it dry, and then you put on your Adipo. Once your Adipo has been on for 10 minutes, massage in any excess and it can be your daytime moisturizer. And then you can go ahead and put on sunscreen on top of that and then makeup. That can work pretty well for people with a drier skin type. If you have a little oilier skin type, a lot of times leaving that Adipo on all day might be too much moisture for you. In that case, you can use a damp cloth um, just to remove the excess and then put on your sunscreen. So there's kind of two methods there, kind of a, a minimalist method and then more that maximal, maximist um, skincare fanatic, which is what I am, um, kind of method that you can do with your Adipo. So one thing I want to talk about is a lot of you guys are just using Adipo in specific areas, like maybe just under your eyes, maybe in this nasal labial fold across the lips. And what I want to say to you guys is that keep in mind, if you've got a, a generous nasal labial fold happening here, and you're just putting it here because you're thinking, well, this is where I want to address the fat that's built up right here. Well, the problem is, is that as we age, we lose collagen and fat pad through here. We also lose bone mass through here. And when the face starts to flatten out and you're losing that padding up in here, it's going to travel down. It's going to be here and it's going to come down into this area down here. So just treating this area is not going to give you the best result. What you're gonna to wanna to do is treat your whole cheeks, and that's what I do. I treat my entire cheek area because I want a nice, healthy fat pad, collagen pad. I want all of that up here, and that's what's gonna help lift this other stuff that's happening and drooping down here. We want to have this fill up. Think of a balloon. If you fill up a balloon, it's gonna go up like this. If it gets saggy, it starts to go down like this. And that's what happens with our skin. So when you're applying your Adipo, think about that and apply it to all those areas. I'm applying um, to my upper brow bone around here at nighttime. I'm also applying it to my forehead because I know that if this is sinking and drooping down here, I want all of the skin to be plumper and firmer. And one of the areas that gets very thin is your forehead and the bridge of your nose. So making sure to get those areas with your Adipo is gonna be really helpful for you. Go out, have some fun, and we'll see you all next week.